The term price discrimination has harsh overtones, but is it necessarily such a bad thing for consumers? The Bulgarians would argue that price discrimination practiced by the amphitheatre was beneficial to society. The costs of maintaining the amphitheatre were largely borne by the richer foreigners who were willing and able to bear those costs. However, when Bulgaria joined the European Union in 2007, the practice was abandoned as it was against EU rules to discriminate between EU citizens on the basis of their nationality. A benefit to price discrimination can be seen in the pharmaceutical industry, where drugs are sold in developed countries at a high price in order to recoup the high costs of research. These same drugs are sold in developing countries at a much lower price. Consumers in developed economies have much lower elasticity of demand for medicines than developing countries and therefore pharmaceutical companies are encouraged by governments to engage in price discrimination. Without price discrimination, AIDS drugs for example, wouldn't be affordable to many sufferers. This also explains why so little private research is conducted into malaria drugs. Malaria is a problem only in low-income countries. It's clear then that price discrimination is widely practiced, but it can only operate where firms have a degree of monopoly power, where there are differences in the demand elasticity between consumers, and where barriers prevent arbitrage from taking place.